Hey folks, it's Pastor George. I'm um, just uh, wishing you a good morning this Thursday, April 16th, 2020. And uh, I hope that you are having a, a good morning so far and a blessed day. Uh, I was reading this morning in my devotions in the book of Joshua. And uh, most of us know of uh, Joshua deals with uh, the conquering of the promised land by the Israelites. They had come out of Egypt by Moses. They wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because of their, their uh, lack of faith. Um, and yet when that generation that did not believe and trust God had died away, God had prepared the next generation to be led by Joshua to conquer this promised land. And when they crossed the Jordan River, and the first city that they came upon was the city of Jericho. And this is often a, a story that is told in our Sunday schools, our children. Almost everyone is familiar with it. This, this city with this great wall around it that um, uh, just stood between. It was their first, first real test. And, the, and God instructed them. I mean, they didn't go into battle against it. He instructed them to take the the worship leader or the, the priests and the musicians and the Ark of the Covenant. And they, they made a procession and they marched around this city for seven days. And at the end of this, the um, that seven days, they shouted and the walls just miraculously collapsed. They, they fell down. Um, and that's how we know the story of, of Jericho. And, and, and as we know, um, Rahab, Rahab was rescued. The one woman who, who hid the spies, she and her household were rescued when she put the scarlet cord in the window. But it's an incredible story. But it, uh, at the very end of it, the, Joshua gives a curse about may, may Jericho never be raised. May it never uh, be built back up again and and it feels you know there's a part of you that almost feels like wow this is total destruction total annihilation this this city has no future no hope no no prospects but i want us to fast forward a few centuries um, and we see another wall and this wall is actually not being torn down this is a wall that is being built up and this is in Jerusalem. It had been after Jerusalem had been destroyed by the, by the Babylonian Empire. And, and uh, the, because of God's judgment, Jerusalem had been wiped out. But God in his grace was building back up this city. And, um, and he sent a man by the name of Nehemiah to build a wall of protection around the city. And... Um, and it wasn't something he did alone, but he brought in the people um, to help him. And in Nehemiah chapter 3, I, I came across this verse, and it just really struck me. It said, Then Eliashib the high priest rose up with his brothers, the priests, and they built the sheep gate. They consecrated it and set its doors. Now, the sheep gate was so important because this is where the sacrificial animals would be brought into the city, to the temple. Um, sacrificial animals were very much a part of the Jewish um, uh, covenant, uh, their, their laws, their sacrifices. But more importantly for us, they, they pointed to the, the redemption that would come through the Lamb of God, Jesus. And, and so they were all kind of symbols that were pointing towards Jesus and towards the redemption, the forgiveness that he, he would bring. And so they were building this sheep gate. They consecrated it and set its doors. They consecrated it as far as the Tower of the Hundred, as far as the Tower of Hananel. And, and, and this is the, the verse that hit me, verse 2. And next to him the men of Jericho built. Now, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to stretch something here other than just the thought that hit me that even though um, Jericho as a city had been destroyed and it never was rebuilt, 
God still had a purpose. God still had a plan for Jericho, and it was to be to be a part of rebuilding um, the city that he was establishing. And I think to myself, what a, a beautiful picture of the gospel message, even in something uh, as small as this, that God's judgment is never what he desires to be the final word in our lives, the lives of, of the world around us. I, I know even people would say, is God bringing his judgment upon the world? Is God judging? And, and understand God is a just God. God will punish sin. But the final word we see is at the cross. And that is redemption. That is grace. That is the heart of God, is to see even those things that were destroyed to be restored. To see those things that um, we gave up on and that, and that seemingly uh, were beyond hope, to be brought back. And, 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 and like I said, I'm not trying to stretch this too far. It's, it's just, I believe in this, it, we see a little bit of a glimpse of the heart of God in towards fallen man, towards people that are under God's judgment, um, that God, uh, God wants to bring all of our lives, no matter how far we've gone from him, no matter how much we deserve punishment, and bring him back into his plan in building his kingdom. That's what redemption, that's what the cross, that is what grace is about. And so whatever you may be going through today, maybe you feel like you've wandered away from God. Maybe you feel like you deserve nothing but judgment. God has a plan for you. God desires to bring your life and to make it a part of his kingdom, a part of his redemptive story. Father, we thank you today that even though we are by nature, as, as Paul said, objects of wrath, by your great grace, you have saved us. And our sins may have, have brought upon ourselves the judgment of God. But Jesus' sacrifice brings into our life the grace of God. And I pray today that, Father, each of us might find our place in that redemption story, that even though at one time we have failed you, even though in many ways we may have disappointed you, even though we may deserve your punishment, God, you don't give us what we deserve. You give us grace. You give us redemption. As we turn to you, you can put us back into the story, your story and you can work your redemption through us. Father, we thank you for your grace and your love in Jesus' name. Hey, folks, you have a blessed day. Uh, keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Uh, just uh, spend time in his presence today. Let him, let him fill you with his love, with his grace, and with his goodness. Blessings.